Salutations everyone and welcome to What Mattered, the show here on my channel where I just talk about what mattered to me. Uh, mostly, you know, video games, movies, comic books, TV shows, that kind of thing. Stuff that I can form an opinion on and, you know, want to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get started. Microsoft's Games for Gold is ringing in the new year with two new video games coming only on the 360 platforms. They have announced that it will continue to the Xbox One, but that service is not going to be available until some time later. But the Games for Gold for January is going to be Sleeping Dogs and Lorecroft Guardian of the Light. Now, this is a bit of a step up from what we have seen. Uh, Games for Gold, you know, Microsoft's answer to Sony's PlayStation Plus model, of course. And people are, are like really impressed that, oh, Sleeping Dogs and, you know, Guardian of the Light, those are two, you know, bigger, newer games than what we have been getting in Games for Gold. Um, and while that is true, it's still rather laughable when you look at the PlayStation Plus, which actually had these two same games available last year in like, June or something. It was a long ass time ago that PlayStation 3 users got uh, Sleeping Dogs and Lower Croft Guardian of the Light way earlier and at the same price. And uh, PlayStation Plus is not stopping there and beating Microsoft at this free games deal because for January, what Sony is giving out for PlayStation Plus subscribers is Bioshock Infinite Brothers. Two critically acclaimed games that, you know, a lot of people list for awards for the game of the year, as well as the new Devil May Cry. So, Sony continuing to blast Microsoft out of the water. Also, two free uh, PlayStation Vita games and a free PlayStation 4 game. So, PlayStation Plus, still the king. And uh, Microsoft has a little bit more catching up to do, but it's all thanks to Sony that Microsoft users actually have this game for gold promotion. And... Hopefully that they'll see the gaps in between their services and, you know, Microsoft can be more competitive with the games that they give out and hopefully get us some stuff on the Xbox One sooner rather than later, especially since Sony already has stuff coming out on the PlayStation 4. Peter Siegel, the director of the new movie Grudge Match as well as Get Smart, is talking about a Shazam movie. Uh, sat down in an interview earlier last week talking about the prospect of a Shazam movie. Uh, film, which of those you don't know, not the greatest hero. Um, he says that there's a lot of things that he would like to do with it. Jeff Johns was helping him out, which is always a good thing because he's a fantastic comic book writer through Marvel and DC. So if, if they can figure out a way to do this, that would be great. But he's uh, Peter Siegel doesn't think that Shazam's going to be able to see the light of day very soon, and that's not surprising uh, based off of you know he doesn't have an very huge established fan base and making a movie of Shazam isn't you know that's uh, that good of a prospect when you compare it to other properties and other superheroes and villains and leagues and this and that sort of thing um, just because I myself don't find Shazam very compelling he's a very important character just because of how powerful he is so he's a very um, necessary when it comes to you know large groups of heroes he's a very important character but his storyline by itself is not really that uh, compelling to me, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Peter Siegel is right and we don't see a Shazam movie because there's not a whole lot there to work on. Now the thing that everyone is talking about, derp trolling, taking down server after server after server, attacking the gamers, blaming huge big money corporations and taking them down. Uh, you guys may have read this in Forbes magazine all the way to drama alert on YouTube. It's absolutely everywhere. They took down League of Legends, Club Penguin, Dota, Dota 2, World of Tanks, uh, like EVE Online. There's like they, they just keep taking down things. They accidentally took down uh, Sony because they were trying to take out uh, Planet Side 2. Accidentally took out Sony according to an interview uh, with uh, Killer Keemstar on Trauma Alert, which seems pretty legit based off of uh, their Twitter. And um, they say that they're just doing it for the lulls. Of course, there was the whole thing with Phantom Lord, one of the most popular Twitch streamers on Twitch. 
he was interviewing them, they were DDoSing every game that he was playing, and then they swatted him. For those of you who don't know, it's sending a SWAT team to your house and, you know, basically, you know, telling the, the police that you have hostages and really fucks your shit up. You know, it's a typical trolling move, uh, you know, trolling under the guise of douchebaggery. So, uh... It doesn't seem like there's much end in sight. It, it, it seems like they're Norwegian, a group, uh, a small group of people under new management. Once again, according to the uh, rather valid-looking interview on Trauma Alert, which I will put in the doobly doo below, and they are on the run. They've had some stuff seized by the feds, but uh, you know, it's just another group of nerds just going for attention, and that's what they're getting. They're getting attention. And uh, that's what they get. That That's what they wanted, and that's what they're going to get. It's a shame. Um, they're ruining people's days. They're taking out all the most popular online services, and hopefully there'll be some resolution to this soon. People don't know why that they're doing this. They're saying that EA sent us because that's kind of their, um, their scapegoat for big corporations and people that want to make money because that's evil. But they're not really hurting the companies as much as they are hurting the gamers in this respect. And all they're really wanting is attention. And unfortunately, they're going to get it when they're this successful. Respawn Entertainment, the makers of Titanfall, have announced that snipers are going to be in the game. But have announced that it's not going to be very likened to Call of Duty snipers. And that quick scoping is not going to be an option. And no scoping is going to be highly, highly ineffective. Um, there's no word yet on how these snipers are going to work against, you know, other soldiers or the Titans. So we're looking for more information. Obviously, you should take this with a grain of salt because Respawn Entertainment, you know, they're, they're a new property. They want to, you know, bring in as many people as they can. They won't want to, you know, neglect any groups, you know, the snipers, the non-snipers. It's going to be big. It's going to be popular. Who knows how great it's going to be or how good the snipers are going to be. They haven't said how effective they are or any of that. And we've had promises from many, many games in the f before about how uh, their sniping was going to be totally different. That didn't end up that way. And of course, you guys know Respawn Entertainment uh, is uh, headed by one of the guys who used to work for Infinity Ward that made Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2, which of course had very ineffective sniping. Wink. Battlefield 4 still experiencing some issues. A lot of connectivity issues, especially on the 360. There's some China Rising uh, DLC that's been in the news a lot because China has banned it because they said it's, you know, a danger to their national security or some bullshit like that. It's China. What do you expect? They're idiots. Anyone in, you know, the Far East when it comes to video games don't have their shit together. Hell, even Australia, they can't even get their shit together when it comes to allowing what games people can play. Um, but also, uh, China Rising DLC transferring from the PlayStation 3 over to the PlayStation 4 apparently has had some problems, uh, connectivity issues. Um, it seems that uh, I'm kind of dodging most of the bullets here. Uh, play, playing uh, Battlefield 4 on the Xbox One, there doesn't seem to be as many issues on the Xbox One as the PlayStation 4 and 360 are experiencing, but I have noticed um, some problems. You know, I'm trying to go into domination. It throws me into team deathmatch. Uh, some some connectivity issues, but they're, they're very, very uncommon, but they do happen uh, more often than they should. So hopefully EA can get their shit together, especially when it comes to the DLC stuff, and uh, this will be resolved and no longer be a story in the new year. And perhaps the most exciting news today, Hayao Miyazaki has announced once again that he is not retiring. If the story is believed to be true, the mastermind behind Totoro, as well as most of the other Studio Ghibli properties with The Wind Rising coming out in February, he announced it was going to be his final film after saying that Laputa was going to be his final film and Hal was going to be his final film and... Uh, you know, uh, uh, Ponyo. I mean, he's announced his retirement seven times and to some people ten times now. And apparently, according to the, uh, the reports uh, today or tomorrow, if you're in Japan and you like, you know, international dateline humor, 
uh, he's not going to be retiring once again. So a lot of people don't like how he keeps going back and forth and how it's like a marketing ploy. But it's like, guys, the greatest director of all time says he's still going to create more movies. I think we should back that. We should back that as much as we can. I don't want Miyazaki to stop. I mean, I, I sure I want him to be happy, but uh, he's given us so many great movies uh, in the past, just from beginning in Lupin the Third, Cackle, Castle of Cagliostro, all the way to, uh, you know, The Wind Rises, which I'm sure is going to be good, doesn't come out till February, at least here in the States. And um, I obviously, honestly really hope that this is true. It seems like it's going to be, and hopefully we'll see some more from uh, the man himself, Miyazaki, in the future. He's one of the greats. Studio Ghibli only prints out gold. You know, after, you know, Pixar fucked up with Cars 2, and then Brave, and, and Monsters University. I mean, they aren't a gold printing factory anymore, but Studio Ghibli always has, and for the foreseeable future, always will be. Very much looking forward to the new film, and in fact, if Miyazaki does re decide to, for the seventh or tenth time, to not retire. So, that's how, all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed what mattered. Uh, be sure to leave your comments below on what you thought of any of the stories, uh, stuff that you would like to come for me to cover in the future. And uh, let me know how it's going, and I will see you guys next time.